Hello and welcome. The so-called International Consortium of Scientists in Life Sciences, represented by Professor Kemmerer in the Corona Committee Foundation, as an expert for PCR diagnostic, has written a retraction letter to the journal Eurosurveillance, demanding the retraction of the Corman et al. publication. The review can consequence weights heavily. Corman, Drosten and colleagues had developed a PCR test that led to a pseudo-pandemic due to a high number of false positive, positive results. In a video that I'm now linking to in the upper right corner, some points of the retraction letter have already been discussed. It's in German. Here, I ask four simple questions to Professor Kemmerer, the consortium and the Corona committee. Below are the questions and some background information. Question number one. Within a few days, weeks, several SARS-CoV-2 PCR WHO reference methods were published independently. Different regions of the world use different PCR assays. How do you explain that the use of different assays led to the same result, namely a rapid increase in PCR case numbers in China, Europe, and the US? Background. The Charité method was first published on the 13th of January 2020. The Hong Kong University method three days later. The method of the Chinese working group on the 21st of January 2020, and so on. All of them, with the exception of the method of the Institut Pasteur, which is based as a part of the Drosten method, were developed independently of each other. In Asia, Europe and the US, mainly different PCR tests were used, which led to the same result. Question number two. One way to estimate the maximum false positive rate of a PCR is the PCR positivity rate during periods of low infection. How can there be a high FPR when, with millions of PCR tests performed under real work conditions, the positivity rate is lower than 0.1%? Background. Studies with large data sets show a false positive rate of about 0.01%. The PCR tests used are now widely used. China tested 10 million people in Wuhan and got 300 PCR positive results. Even assuming that all positive results are false positives, the false positive rate is 0.003%. Also in China, 20 million entrants were tested by PCR, of which 3,100 tests were positive. Again, assuming that all these positives were false positives, the false positive rate is 0.01%. In the UK, 840,000 people were randomly tested. The study gives a false positive rate of 0.005%. In New Zealand and Australia, millions of tests were performed during the winter season. Again, assuming that all positive results are false positives, the false positive rate is 0.05%. Also in Germany, PCR positive rate and thus the maximum false positive rate was below 0.1% in regions with low infection incidence, example given in Hamburg in the weeks 21 to 23, with approximately 9,000 PCR tests being performed, likewise in parts of Austria. Question number three. 80 to 99% of PCR positive individuals develop SARS CoV 2 specific antibodies as a sign of an immune response from infection. The small proportion of individuals who, not, who do not develop antibodies show activation of the innate immune system as a sign of infection. How does the supposedly high false, false positive rate fit with these results? Background. There are a number of studies investigating the formation of SARS-CoV-2 specific antibodies. In one study, with over 250 participants, all PCR positive individuals developed SARS-CoV-2 specific antibodies during the study period, regardless of the CD value of the PCR. In another study of over 600 PCR positive individuals, 99% developed antibodies as a sign of having been infected with SARS-CoV-2. A meta-analysis conducted by the, by the uh, Cochrane Consortium with over 8,500 PCR positive persons showed an antibody formation in 96% of the cases. For the small proportion of individuals who do not develop antibodies, activation of the innate immune system has been documented. Question number four. You claim a poorly developed PCR caused a pseudopandemic. Determination of SARS-CoV-2 specific antibodies with validated assays is a method independent of PCR to determine the proportion of the population that is SARS-CoV-2 positive, i.e. their prevalence. 
This shows worldwide that PCR underestimates the true number of infected persons by a factor of 3 to 20. How does the increasing seroprevalence worldwide fit into the pseudo-pandemic picture? Background. PCR detects parts of the SARS-CoV-2 genome with very high specificity. Infection by SARS-CoV-2 leads to the formation of specific antibodies, i.e. the detection of these SARS-CoV-2 specific antibodies can determine acute or recent infection. This method is used to determine the percentage of people who have actually been infected. That's the so-called seroprevalence. Validated tests are used. In over 300 seroprevalence studies, it was shown that no SARS-CoV-2 specific antibodies were detectable in samples collected before the start of the pandemic. The seroprevalence increases simultaneously with the PCR cases. The number of people actually infected was underestimated by the PCR test by a factor of 3 to 20. And excess mortality is only found in regions with high PCR case numbers and correspondingly increased seroprevalence. In the sense of the scientific transparency you, de you demand, these questions should be answered. So I thank you for listening and I wish you a good day.